Welcome to Tirana, Albania. Today we're going to go for a walk down in the city center, check out some of the sites, and learn about this great country. So let's go. As I'm leaving my apartment here in the city center in Tirana, check out these steps and check out the interior of this apartment building. Feels a little bit like the end of the movie Saving Private Ryan. Some of these stairs are very well maintained. Here's the real Tirana right outside of my building. We've got all the garbage collection for the entire neighborhood. It's not the nicest thing to be greeted with every time you come downstairs, but they've got to put it somewhere. My neighborhood's been good. I talked to one woman who spent some time in Kabul, Afghanistan, and she said that the city and a lot of the buildings remind her of Kabul. And also when I was flying in, I saw a lot of greenery and mountains around. One of the first things I thought of was Colombia. And I also spoke to someone from Colombia and she said that yes, it does resemble Colombia and it does remind her of her home. The building that I'm staying in is right in this block of buildings. It's across from this park, which now it's nice. They filled this pool with water for the last three weeks. It's been totally empty. And then also in this park, it's almost five o'clock. So after work, people come out here with their families, their kids, there'll be a bunch of kids on this playground equipment. People will be over here playing soccer, taking their dogs out for a walk, sitting in the park, having fun talking to their friends. By the way, the Airbnb has been pretty good. It's nice, it's new. It feels safe and secure. The door is thick and heavy. The internet is good and fast. The only thing is with some of these new Airbnbs, they don't get all the details right. So for example, there's no garbage can in the bathroom. All they have there are butter knives. So if you wanna cut an apple, you gotta use a butter knife. <laughs> it's the little things about five or seven minutes away from my neighborhood. I was able to find a gym. Gym is pretty good. It has basically everything. It's a little small, but they do have pretty much everything I could need, including a seated calf raise machine. So that's how I know they have a lot of equipment because most gyms I go to do not have a seated calf raise machine. One important note about gyms here in Albania, I think you're expected to bring your own towel to wipe the machines off. They don't have any paper towels around, which is the first time I've ever seen that. There's no way to wipe machines down unless you bring your own towel. And also it does get pretty hot in there because the AC is not always running. By the way, the parking here is horrendous. <laughs> Look, all these cars are blocked in. During communism, private ownership of cars was not allowed. So they didn't get cars until the 90s. They've only been driving here for 30 some years. And the city wasn't designed to have a lot of parking spaces. You can imagine back in the 90s, there was plenty of places to park when there was only a few hundred cars, maybe a few thousand cars. Now they have probably in excess of 100,000 cars here and there's only a few thousand parking spaces. Hey, look, here's my gym. Just behind the gym, there's this street with all these shops on it. A few of them are still open. It's just after five o'clock here. A lot of them have gone home already. These light poles are great. This is the only place in the world where I've seen LEDs on the stem of the post. We've arrived at Skander Bay Square in the city center here in Tirana. When are you coming to Albania? They're expecting you. I see a lot of new construction around, especially down in the city center here where they're building these high rises. I'm told that these are the big brands coming to Tirana. Tourism is currently the fifth biggest industry here in Albania. And one guy I was talking to, he expects it to go to number one in the next few years. The Opera House here at Skanderbeg Square. It's where the free tour leaves from at six o'clock every night and 10 a.m. every morning. I do recommend it. It talks about the history of Tirana. It talks about some of the sites here in Albania. Enrique Iglesias was here last week. Ricky Martin's coming here next week. So they are reliving the late 90s here in Tirana. The Albanian flag flying overhead here in Skanderbeg Square. The red color of the flag represents the blood for all of those who have spilled blood for their country here. And the eagle represents courage. Albania was part of the Roman Empire. It was actually part of the Byzantine Empire. And so on the flag, there's the double-headed eagle, which is either the same or it's very similar to the eagle that was on the flag of the Holy Roman Empire. And the eagle has two heads because one head is facing west towards Rome and the other head is facing east towards Constantinople the two capitals of the Roman Empire. When I first arrived here in Tirana, after coming from the airport, it was interesting. There was a yak right next to the side of the highway. And then I also saw a hotel with a logo that looks very similar to the Van Halen logo. There's a museum here on the side of Skander Bay Square. It has this mural. The mural was installed by the communists. So there's a bit of propaganda going on here. Here's the classic socialist farmer. 
and all the other figures here related to the history of Albania. The mosaic is actually only two months old. They just got done restoring it and they just unveiled it two months ago and it took them four years to restore. Behind the opera house now, if you want to catch the bus, this is the place to do it. For example, this white bus here, it goes to the terminal station, the bus terminal. And then from there, I took a bus to Durez, which is a coastal city here. It cost me $2. It was about a 40 minute ride. It only cost $2. I made a video about it too, which I'll link below in the description and in the comments. I was here a couple days ago. I showed up, I found bus L11 and I took it up the mountain. There's a cable car that you can go up. It's called the Daiti Express. It goes up Daiti Mountain. So bus L11 from here takes you to the cable car, which I made a video about that too. And I will post that in the comments and in the description. Skander Bay Square is named after Skander Bay. His original name was George, and he was sent as a hostage to the Ottoman Empire where he served their military. They gave him the name Skander for Alexander and the title of Bay, which is kind of like general, I think. And so they just say it all as one word, Skander Bay. Eventually he deserted the Ottoman military. He came back to Albania and he fought against the Ottomans and he fought them off and fended them off and continuously defeated them in a way that I don't think anyone else really did during the heyday of the Ottoman Empire. So he's a national hero of Albania. By the way, this building, when it's all said and done, it's supposed to be in the shape of the head of Skanderbeg. Just off of Skander Bay Square, we have Bunkar 2, which is a memorial to the victims of the communists. I had a chance to go to Bunkard 1, which is not in the city center. And Bunkard 1 is a bunker in the hillside. They're both atomic fallout shelters. Bunkard 1 goes super deep into the earth. It's several levels and many rooms, whereas Bunkard 2 is essentially just underneath this plaza. The building outside of Bunkar 2 is nicely decorated and it's this nice salmon color because they thought if you're going to come out after this somber experience, you should at least come out to nice looking buildings that can help cheer you up. As we leave Skander Bay Square, Albania was under the Ottoman control until 1912 and then they became an independent republic that lasted for a couple of years. They had a parliament and one of the members of the parliament convinced everyone else to elect him king. King Zog. He remained in control all the way until 1939 when World War II started and the Italians invaded Albania. And at the end of World War II, Albania became a communist country. And from 1944 until 1985, it was ruled by one man, Enver Hoxha. And finally, communism collapsed in 1991. We've now arrived on Toptani Street. Over here, there's a piece of modern art called The Cloud. The cloud travels around from city to city. It was supposed to be here for two years, but now it's actually been here for six years. Every time I come to Toptani Street, I see this trouble clef here. It's built into the sidewalk. The sidewalk is a musical staff, except they didn't know any music theory when they built this. They put the trouble clef at the wrong end of the staff. And then the benches are notes, but there's no melody because the people that built it didn't know how to read or write music. Also on Toptani Street, here we have the free tour behind us. And I don't know if there's fireworks or something going off. The movie theater is here on Top Tani Street, also restaurants and bars. When I was here, Bill Clinton was visiting Albania. And one night I was walking down the street here and there was a bunch of SUVs on the street and there was a bunch of security and everyone was just waiting for somebody to come out of one of these restaurants here. And I didn't think much of it. I went past it. And then as I got to the end of the street over there, I was like, oh, I wonder if that was going to be Bill Clinton coming out. At the end of Top Tani Street, we have Top Tani Mall, and across from that, we have the castle here in Tirana. They know it's not much of a castle, it's just kind of castle walls on the outside, and then on the inside, all kinds of shops, restaurants, bars, place to come, get some food, get some drink, buy some souvenirs. As we leave the castle, here's another new building. It's a relief map in the shape of Albania, with the mountains in the north, the coast on the west, and on these terraces, there's plants, and the plants come from the different regions in Albania. Here's the source of those booms. I thought I was hearing fireworks, and there's some kind of a demonstration going on. These guys have like gas canisters. 
or some kind of firework that they're rolling and the canisters are exploding and smoking. As we continue walking through Tirana, here's the Catholic Church. There's a statue of Mother Teresa outside. Inside, there's a mosaic of Mother Teresa. There's also a stained glass window of Mother Teresa inside. I believe she summarized her life by saying, I'm a Macedonian by birth, Albanian by blood, and Christian by religion. As she was born in Macedonia to Albanian parents. She's probably the most famous Albanian. As we continue our walk through the city center, we walked across Vodafone Bridge. Those red arches are the logo for Vodafone, which by the way, you can get a really cheap SIM card here. You can get 100 gigs for three weeks for $29. It's the tourist plan <laughs> brought to you by Vodafone, apparently. As we are on top of the Pyramid of Tirana, the pyramid used to be a museum to Enver Hoxha, the communist dictator. And after that, it was a headquarters of NATO. After that, it was a TV station. And now it's going to be a community center where you can come here, you can take classes, you can learn about tech, you can learn about computers and other things. If you don't mind steps, it's also a nice place to go for a walk, go to the top, get some really nice views, see a sunset. As we continue our walk here in Tirana, so the country is Albania, but inside of Albania, they don't call it Albania, they call it Shiparia, and they don't call the language Albanian, they call the language Ship. And if you're a man from Albania, then they call you Shiptar. And if you're a woman from Albania, then you're a Shiptare. As I'm here in the park, another free tour has gathered behind me, looking at this small bunker. They installed 175,000 bunkers across Albania. There's one here at the back of the park, and there's one over here at the front of the park. Albania was bunkerized during the communist times. The leader, Envar Hoxha, eventually broke off ties with Yugoslavia and said that Yugoslavia is not communist enough. They also, get this, broke off ties with the Soviet Union and said, you're not communist enough for us. And so then there was a period where the only ally that they had was China, interestingly enough. So there was an exchange between China and Albania of culture and information, and that was it. And then of course, guess what happened? They eventually told China that they weren't communist enough. So from 1978 to 1991 was maybe considered the worst time because they were totally isolated, cut off from the rest of the world. They compare it kind of to the way North Korea is. Anyway, as a result, Envar Hoxha came up with the idea to install all these bunkers all across not only the cities, but throughout the countryside because he wanted a way for Albania to defend itself. And he thought maybe someday the Soviets would come and invade or maybe someone else would come and invade or maybe the Americans would invade. So they'd have all of these bunkers that they could go to and put soldiers inside of and shoot. <laughs> and that way they'd be able to ward off any invaders. Communism in Albania was considered bad for two reasons. One was the isolation. The second reason was collective punishment, which is the practice of punishing your family for your mistakes. So for example, if you escape from the country, then your family will be killed. And not only would your mom and dad, brothers, sisters, but they would often punish your extended family too. So they might execute your cousin or your aunts, uncles. The bunker is here and then over here, it's a piece of the Berlin Wall. It was given to Tirana in 2013, and the people of Albania didn't even know there was a Berlin Wall because they were so isolated. Also on this corner, this was the checkpoint to get into this neighborhood, the Blaku neighborhood, where a lot of the party leaders lived. This was the fancy part of town and a restricted area to normal people. In Albanian, if you want to say yes, you say po. If you want to say no, you say yo. Po yo, po yo, po yo. That's the joke that they make here. It sounds kind of like chicken in Spanish, po yo. Another word I kind of know how to say is bag, like a plastic bag. I go to the grocery store and then they say, Jason, Jason. Hello is see any, and how are you is see ya. When I was leaving the gym, I said, see ya. <laughs> There's a couple of the people there, they speak English. But when I said see ya, she said to me, she goes, something, something, ship. Like, do you speak Albanian? And I was like, no. <laughs> so she was confused. She's like, oh yeah, see ya. That's how you say, how are you? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's how you say goodbye in English. See you later. Off to the side here, it's the house of the former Communist Party leader, Envar Hoxha. He lived here from 1975 until when he died in 1985. He was the leader of the party from 1944 until 1985. Each according to his need. Apparently, if you're the leader of the country, you need a tri-level mansion to live in. Whereas everyone else has been stripped of all their property and it's now become property of the state. If you want to know how to say thank you, this is how they say it. Falimindirit. Falimindirit. 
I'm on free Ukraine street. Despite having a badass flag, Albania is not really known for throwing its weight around militarily, but they did protest the Ukraine war by renaming this street to free Ukraine street. And the significance is this is the street where the Russian embassy was on. That way, anytime someone in Moscow wanted to send a letter to the embassy here in Albania, they would have to write free Ukraine. <laughs> As a result, the embassy packed up and they moved across town. And now they're thinking of renaming that street. So we'll see what happens. Well, we did it. We returned to the park and as promised, the park is full. Kids are out there playing with their friends and with their parents. Well, we learned about some of the history here in Albania and here in Tirana. We saw Skander Bay Square. We saw the bunker. We saw the Berlin Wall. We saw the pyramid. We saw the awesome views and the setting sun. What was your favorite part and what do you think of Albania? What do you think of Tirana? Let me know in the comments below. Or as always, if you just want to say hello, I would love to hear from you. I read all of those comments as I'm out here on the journey and you're out here with me. So from Tirana, Albania, thank you so much for watching. Or as they say, follow me in the edit and see you next time.